which is more important? Let's say let's say Grush is right. There, there is something, and I don't know. I actually don't know which because I think you're you do an outstanding job. You don't really kind of tip your hand on what you truly believe. You're not dogmatic. You're kind of curious. You want to hear the answer. Um, uh, and and you know, for me, if I asked you just point blank, I said, let's say Grush is right. What do you think is the technology that allowed these spacecraft to get? Here he's claiming, as far I understand it, he hasn't seen. And you cor please correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't follow this nearly as close as you do. Um, but he's claiming that there are people in the government, our U.S. government, that have covered up the landing of of spacecraft with bodies inside, with some type of biologics. He's called them mm -hmm. in, in congressional testimony. Um, um, I've had on Ryan Graves on my podcast, who's a, a former F-18 pilot. We've he's been here too. Yeah, yeah, and he's great, and he's a very sweet guy, and I believe you know he's earnest in his mission, what he's trying to accomplish. Um, and he hasn't said though, you know, he 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 did never said that he saw these craft, these spheres and stuff. Yes, exactly. So he said that he knows the pilots, and they would not only see them, they'd see them every day, every deployment. Every, so, and Fravor claims he saw this tic tac. Let's just say they're all real. There's some kernel of truth. God tells you here danny boom they're true there's tic tacs there's crash saucers there's biologics there's cubes with spheres and spheres with cubes what if i asked you danny what was the technology that was more important to those aliens to get here was it string theory or was it metallurgy what would you say it is what technology enabled it more like if you just had a guess was it something like string theory or was it something like metallurgy? I would say something like metallurgy. Yeah. I mean, it's much more practical, right? There's nothing about string theory necessarily that involves anything that's a necessary condition for those aliens to get here. And yet you have people like Jack and like others that you need this warp drive and you need this theory of physics and Eric's theory of geometric unity is wrong because this is a... Uh, to, at, to answer this question usually presupposes the fact that these distances are enormous, which is true. I mean, these distances are enormous, but the age of the universe is also quite enormous, right? So if you imagine um, that these craft have been traveling, if they exist, and I'm not saying I actually don't think they exist, right? you know, so, so uh, I'd rather, you know, kind of defend that. But I think to be an intellectual and to be honest, you have to say, look, let's give the other side steel man the, your opponent's argument and see if that sharpens up your own. So from my perspective, when people result, as Dave Grush has, that these things are holograms and they travel at the, you know, faster than the speed of light and they can manipulate space-time. I've heard him when he was on Joe Rogan speculating about this, tying in these loose notions of quantum mechanics and relativity and warp drives and, and all these other things. Um, he's a physicist too, isn't he, Grush? No. No, I, think I thought he had a degree in physics. <clears throat> I'd have a bachelor's degree or something. Right. That doesn't mean he's a physicist. Yeah, and he's not a pilot. I mean, right, he's not. Right, right. Right. Um, and I don't think that those things necessarily like Fravor. Oh, well, you're doubting a U.S. Navy veteran. I'm like, he has more bigger balls than I do, but that doesn't mean he's like better observer and analytic when it comes to data analysis. He did an eyewitness thing. You know, probably most courts, you know, <laughs> eyewitness reports are replete with being completely erroneous, mis misinterpreted. You know, they have famous studies where there's like the Stanford studies, a gorilla dribbling a basketball like between all these other people and you're you're just counting how many times somebody dribbles a basketball and a gorilla goes through nobody notices the gorilla i mean the the fact that human beings are not considered the, as reliable as other forms of evidence in many situations leads me to say that like yeah i'm just as qualified i'm not again i don't have the balls that david fravor ryan graves have my friend ariel kleinerman i've had on all these guys i haven't on david fravor uh, Alex Dietrich. I mean, I'm like, she has uh, big balls, whatever she has, big ovaries. <laughs> I'm the. Uh, I don't have the courage. I didn't have the the physical, mental abilities to be a pilot at their level. I fly little Cessnas around, but um, okay, so I stipulate that. But th does that mean that you just trust whatever they say? I mean, are we in the stance? Are we going to take the stance that someone in the government is to be trusted? I mean, I, I always thought that the government is to be is to be suspicious of. Right? right. They covered up Roswell. They covered up all these things. Right. The Kennedy assassination. So you can't have it both ways. I mean, at some point you have to look and say, what do the data tell us right now? And I'm always surprised on my channel how many people just assume that I'm working for big astronomy or there's some like, you know, conspiracy that I'm a part of that like because I am skeptical of the existence. I'll be honest, I'm skeptical not only of the existence of alien technology, I'm fairly suspicious of the existence of alien life which is a prerequisite for alien intelligence and technology, right? So, and I've made arguments for that when I was on Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman, um, but I'm not the final word either, you know, so caveat emptor. Hmm. 
why don't you believe that there is alien life or any you say you said you have said before that you don't believe that there is alien life or intelligent alien life uh, because I, I'm careful about it. I don't I don't say I don't believe. Like I say I don't believe in gravity you don't, either. Evidence. There's no yeah. evidence. That's right. Right. But people like Jack Sarfati would say that there is evidence and they've seen it and it's not something you can measure and test in a laboratory with beakers. It's something that you have to see. It's intelligence. It's police. It's investigative work. It's police work. Like it's, it's something that scientists aren't going to have access to and they won't be able to measure and detect, but it's something that exists because they've seen it and they know, they know that, you know, if you have a security clearance or whatever it might be, it's, it's verifiable okay. and, it's, and it's there. So I ask you, are you, are you a Christian? Um, no, I'm not really like religious. Though. You don't believe in God, or I mean, I, be I believe in God. I haven't really explored it too right. much. I, I, be I, the... I believe in something. Yeah, I don't follow a I don't follow a strict faith. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You're not a practice. You know, right, I don't practice. practice right, right, right. Um, fine, but um, but you know, people that believe the existence of Jesus Christ, not only based on the testimonies of the New Testament, but also because they've had personal revelation or they've been sa saved salvation from by the works of Jesus that they ascribe to Jesus, right? Um, would you uh, uh, would you attribute those scientifically in any way? Would you say that their their personal revelation of Christ, you know, in their deepest darkest moments, they're at the bottom of a bottle, or they're at the top of the world when they have a baby, or whatever? Do you, is that a scientific claim or is that a faith claim? It's not scientific, right? So in that sense, that's okay because faith is one thing and and science is another thing. These things that they're talking about that they've seen with their eyes or they've experienced, and there's some you know cover. Those are also now they're they're not only faith, but they're also saying they're scientific. If you're making a claim that there's there's objects and those objects have traveled across interstellar distances, and or unless you, or as Tom DeLong told me on my podcast a long time ago that those things have come from forwards in time or backwards. I right. don't fully understand. Right. And he can't prove it. And he has no chain of evidence that traces the the alien spacecraft that that he claims he has evidence of. Um, he's lost the kind of provenance, as they would call it mm. in antiquing. Um, so at what level do you say, well, okay, that's now you're just talking about faith, which is fine. You could talk about faith all you want, but your faith is almost like taste. Like I hate fish. Mm -hmm. There's no much, you could take me to the seafood restaurant down the street and tell me how great this thing tastes. And, and I'm going to say, I don't give a crap. I'm not going to eat that damn thing. <laughs> and you could say, even as people do, it doesn't taste like fish. I'll say, you know what else doesn't taste like fish? A freaking hamburger doesn't taste like fish. So I'll just skip the middleman and I'll have my own hamburger. Right. right? There's no amount of that that will convince a person to believe based Based on your faith in something else, which may be very visceral to you, it may have saved your life, or it may have, you know, made you a better man. But that doesn't have any effect on other people. And science is about the the determination of rules and patterns throughout the universe that hold throughout the universe. The Copernican principle states the universe doesn't care who you are, where you are, what you are, what you're made of, what day it is. If I drop this this your gift, I'm gonna wish you a happy Hanukkah. So oh, I brought you a gift. Thank you. So I, I got you I got you two gifts. Well three gifts. Um so this is this is your gift for early Christmas present. Because I want you to keep your anus clean. Your anus so, so I got oh, you your wow, anus. this so is amazing. You gotta share it with Steve. Oh, my oh God. Steve, we can keep uh, our we can bleach our butthole. Your your ani. You know that NASA's considering changing the name because it's so embarrassing to say your anus, right? <laughs> they've commissioned a panel. That's beautiful. They've come up with the following term: erectum. <laughs>